All right, we are back with another StarCraft II replay cast. This one's going to once again be on the new map Merry-Go-Round, which is going to be appearing in the latter next season. I'm playing a 1v1 OBS against a diamond level opponent. Or... I think, yeah, I think all four players I played were diamond diamond level. So that that's pretty good. Some were high diamond like myself, some were just mid-diamond, a little lower MMR than myself, but they should all be able to put up a decent comp competition. So I sent out two SCV scouts this time because I really want to get the injury block because I'm actually going to try out the Planetary Fortress Rush. Uh, I just want to test my different strategies on this map. Um, I believe this would be the obvious third for Zerg, especially if I'm spawned up this way. I think the Zerg will always expand away from where I am. So with this being the obvious third, I feel safe to put a planetary up here. You can also put a planetary here, and that was almost guaranteed not to get spotted. A little bit further of a distance to, to go. When I say planetary, I mean a command center. I'm going to be floating it before I make it a PF. And this is going to be the PF rush. So taking my gas at home, I kind of forgot my second gas, which means um, I can't start my factory until after I start my planetary. Usually I can get enough gas to start my factory and still have enough gas for my planetary afterwards. It's floating to his base. I always send in one SCV scout as a decoy. Um, he didn't actually see it though, which kind of sucks. Usually they have creep already spread out this way. Um, so maybe I should poke in, make myself visible, then hop up to the corners and hide in the back here. Because if you get the, like, the queen to walk over here, then walk off creep a little bit to attack this SCV, pull the links back there, it just makes it more likely your command center will spend less time getting attacked. Oh, those links down, I'm going to move out. Two more links dying. Same time, I got the command center turning into planetary. Pulling drones, very smart, and zerglings. But remember, he's lost some initial zerglings, and he's a little bit late to start attacking this. Bunch more links out now, and yeah, it looks like it got as low as about 40 hit points, but the PF finished. So these uh, zerglings and drones are going to disappear quickly. I got a few more marines normal, I think I got like three of them. Again, since I was late taking my second gas, I had more money to spend, so I just bought more marines. And it came in kinda handy, I mean it's something to soak up a little bit of damage. Maybe distract the lings. And then this overlord that hangs out over the natural, which is typically very safe, um, all of a sudden isn't in a safe spot anymore, because <laughs> his marines are protected by a planetary. So floating at the barracks, that's going to be my high ground vision. It's also going to be my scout on his main. And getting a factory. Second factory. I like to get first factory with a tech lab, second factory with a reactor, and then a third naked factory and an armory. And depending on what I'm up against, uh, we'll determine what add-on I get on the third factory. Because often you're mineral heavy, so getting a reactor is kind of nice, just leaving it naked for help at production is, is good. But if you're going up against like mutas, you probably want to get uh, two Thors at a time. So I have seen multiple queens, like four of them I think at one point, so I'm a little bit afraid with the barracks. I try to send it in with against four queens and it's just going to die quickly. So I throw down a scan instead and I saw layer upgrading, so I kind of need to know what the layer tech is going to be. Mutilus, Gnidus, Drop Play, Burrowed Roach. So it looks like it's going to be Nidus. I send in the barracks. But if you look at my vision, I did not see the Nidus. 
Uh, so I just throw down random missile turrets just in case, because it could be Spire. And then I think I scan again. Thinking that maybe he hasn't thrown down his tech yet, maybe he just finished the layer and he hadn't decided on his tech. But I scan again, still missing Nidus, don't know what to mime up against. So one thing I am missing is a Hellion in my base. You need one patrolling the the, the fog award area of your base, like just going back and forth. That's what I like to do. You can also put just like make sure you have vision of your entire base with like supply depots. Um, if you really get if you have better map awareness than I do. Um, and patrolling Hellion obviously won't kill a Nidus Worm as it's coming up, but it'll start initial damage, and you'll hear, like, anytime you go to your base, you'll hear the Hellion attacking, which for me is enough to usually pull SCVs in time. So Nidus unloading on my base, a bunch of queens, a bunch of uh, roaches, even a creep tumor. I decided to abandon my base. I do have a Thor out. I was just guessing that it was going to be Mutalis because <laughs> I'm like, well, there's layer tech, and that's usually what happens with layer tech. Uh, I could see this thing wasn't shaking in a way that was drop tech, so I didn't know what else it could be. This is like my <laughs> last stand Thor here. <laughs> I'm not sure how well it's going to do against Mass Roach, but we'll see. Roach is a pretty hard, hard counter to it. Even pumping some more Roaches through. And he's got transfuses, so nothing's dying. <laughs> uh, he is killing SCVs. I got full back. Uh, figure I'll take a position a little bit further back where he doesn't have as much um, surface area or much of a concave on me. And with that, I'm able to hold at the same time. I finally decided to counterattack his base, which should have occurred to me a long time ago with his whole armies in my base. And that is the end of that game. So, let me just speed through this part until the next game starts, because I know it bugs out. Oh, shoot. It's going to bug out, isn't it? It's going to be like permanently zoomed in here, I think. I've tried doing replays and odds before. Uh, no, we're okay. So, we'll go to... What's the end here? Um, I think a more typical thing that would happen here is he sends everything through the Nidus and like more or less murders my main. What you can do, actually, is just float all your structures down here take as natural as your base. At the same time, all your units that you had at his base, send them into his. If you can, take out the Nidus Worm first. Because once you committed to floating away, um, this base is already kind of like mostly dead. So the one thing you don't want him to do is send his whole army home and defend his main. Um, Yeah, so just a move all this stuff into his base. It looks like I was I was sending some of my stuff back, but had I not done that, I would have had enough troops easily to kill a defenseless base. So had we done that, I'd take out his base. He loses his Nidus worm. Uh, without the without the Nidus network, he can't flee his drones. So he's unlikely to establish a new base. Which means I can just fall back to this planetary here, you know, get my siege tanks and whatnot set up after I take out his main. And, uh, yeah, initially, eventually my orbitals and factories will get down there as well. So that leaves me on one base versus his zero base, which is pretty good. But yeah, when you see the layer, the two things I typically have to worry about is Nidus Worm and. Spire. So if you scout a spire, just you know, missile turrets here. You don't have to go overboard on missile turrets because eventually you're going to have Thors. So maybe a couple to protect the PF, maybe one more 
just out to protect your lit distance mining. Maybe three in your main, and just waiting on the Thors. Actually, usually I build a, a proxy one of the factories out here, which I can be building a Thor out at the. Uh, allows me to get my first siege tank out here, and then also allows me to get a Thor out here later on. Um, and then against Nidus Worm, what you want is is to keep your wall off closed, a Hellion patrolling this area, and then a siege tank behind the wall off. So that way. The Hellion will catch him if he tries to Nidus in your base, and you can take down the Nidus Worm. And if he Nidus is like out here and, and floods you with roaches, you got a wall off with a siege tank behind, which is pretty strong, especially with the, the rest of your production coming out this way. And yeah, you got to prepare for both, I guess, if you see the layer and uh, <laughs> you see the layer and you don't see the tech structure of the layer. Because, you know, a layer means that an overlord can poop and creep. So who knows? Maybe he has a drone over here with an overlord pooping creep and built a spire right there. Or in this case, he just hid one within his base, and I missed it with my scans. Um, I guess the other thing you should look for if you went layer and you don't see anything is, is the layer shaking? That can mean drop tech. So you may have to worry about the doom drop. Or even something like the Roach Warren spinning around. Maybe he's going for the Tunneling Claws, uh, which isn't, that's like the easiest thing to deal with. Just like one missile turret at the, at the PF and you're in good shape. So with that, we will call it the end of this video, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Check the description for a thumbs up link. Hit that follow button because I'm putting out lots of StarCraft content as per usual. And uh, with that, goodbye.